morning. Welcome to A Moment of Truth. I'm Stoney Kaiser, pastor of the Church of God of the Union Assembly here in Dalton, Georgia. We are very honored that you have taken the time to tune in to our service here today and the, the things that we are saying and doing. I hope that they have, have been a blessing to you and that you have been getting some encouragement and, uh, and just some purpose in life. Uh, that's what this is all about. We want people to know that Jesus Christ is the Lord. We believe that today with all our heart. Uh, our church, of course, is located down at 2211 South Dixie Highway. Uh, we, we love people. We love God. We love the Lord Jesus Christ and just so thankful that he has come into our life. This new year that we have come into in 2015, we are, we are striving to try to fulfill our, our, our duties for him and to do what he would have us to do and to live for him. We've been uh, teaching about the new day, the new beginning, the new light, or the light of Jesus Christ that is, has come into our life and, and has caused us to be able to get out of darkness and to walk into, uh, into the Spirit with Jesus Christ and, and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Um, that's what I want to take up here today and, and to talk a little bit about being quickened and being made alive. Uh, if you are dead in sin... You are still living in that first birth. If you are, if you are living according to the filth of the flesh, uh, uh, the the things that you have learned by the traditions of your fathers, uh, that is uh, of the fleshly nature, then you've not received that second birth. You've not been baptized and and your sins washed away and become freed from the things and having that remission that we had talked about. Uh, for the salvation of our souls and of our lives and to enjoy the pleasure of life. Uh, that's what this is all about. I want, to, uh, I want to go back to 2 Peter, the first chapter, and the 19th verse. And I'm going to read that uh, here for you, for you just a minute. He said, we, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. I remember the light of the gospel shining in my heart. You know, I, I, I was listening to a brother speak the other day, and he was talking about how that he had believed so many different things all his life, and then all of a sudden it was just like a light came on in his, in his eyes, and he could see the truth. And that, there's some meaning behind that. There, there is a light. And that is that true light that John the Baptist talked about uh, when he came as a forerunner of Jesus Christ. It was a true light, not fairy tales, not some whelm of doctrine that, that you would just uh, maybe think is, is one way of going. It's the true light, that that brings joy and salvation that can cause you not to live in sin anymore. Uh, on that note, this day star that arises in our heart uh, it, it brings light, it brings gospel, it brings truth to you. Um, I want to read in the second chapter of Ephesians and the first verse reading down. It said, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. You were dead in trespasses and sins. If you are dead today, then you need to become alive. If you are in darkness, if you're in the valley of the shadow of death, then you need to know that Christ can give you light. Uh, he told us in one place, Awake thou that sleepest, and Christ shall give thee light. That light is a, a light of gospel. It's a light of peace. It's a, a light of excitement. When you get that in your life, then you'll want to share it with somebody else. You'll want to go and tell, like the man that was that was blind, and, and Jesus came by, and he healed him. And they asked him, said, you know, they are trying to find a way to criticize Jesus Christ for healing the man on the Sabbath day to start with. But he said, all I know is I was once blind, but now I see. That light of the gospel can help you to see out of that darkness, help you to get out of that and, and have a, a, a new life, a new heaven, a new place that you can go to that would cause you not to live so, so down and out, but you can have peace and joy. And that's back to this second uh, chapter, or, uh, for, uh, uh, sorry, second chapter of Ephesians. I'll get that out in a minute. And the, uh, now the second verse. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world. 
You see, you were dead in trespasses and sins. And in, in time past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. The prince of the power of the air. That is the devil. That is Satan. He that hath the power of death. <coughs> Excuse me. That is the devil. If we have uh, are walking according to the prince of the power of the air, the air, we are walking in sin. We are in darkness. We don't have that light of life that Jesus was. We don't have that in our life. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh. I read it at the first part of, of this message and this, this series that we were talking about where it said that we've all sinned, we've all lived in sin, we've all lived there, we've all been in that darkness. But thank God through Jesus Christ, He brought us light, He brought us mercy, got us out of that, got us into a, a place where we can be happy, where we can know that there is something greater waiting for us and not something that we are wanting to dread. If you are living in sin today, I want to tell you, listen to me please, the wages of sin is death. The, but the gift of God is eternal life. That gift of God is that day star that has arise in our, in our life and in our heart. Awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead, for Christ shall give thee light. We're not walking that way anymore if we know Jesus Christ. We're laying down the filth of the flesh. Um, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. That nature was that Adam nature. We follow that Adam nature. Once we are born of a woman, then we become to, to follow that Adam nature, and then our days are full of trouble, and we're in darkness. But that light has come. Arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Arise, shine, for thy light. I can't say it enough. Thy light has come. Jesus Christ is light. That light of the gospel has come for us. We need to accept it. We need to live by it. But the fourth verse of the second chapter of Ephesians. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, hath quickened us, made us alive, made us not in that dark place anymore, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are, ye are saved, and hath made us sit together Made, and has raised us up together and made us sit together, listen to this, in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. If we are baptized into his death, then we are raised like his resurrection was to walk a newness of life. You become in a second place, that new beginning, that second birth. Remember we talked about Nicodemus where he told him you must be born again. That second birth. It's not this natural body that's born again. It's the whole spirit, soul, and body. It's a spiritual life. Whatever was born the first time, it was a spirit, a soul, and a body. It's not that naturally that's born again, but it's that spiritually that's born again. It's not just the outward man, but it's the inward man also. It's our whole spirit, soul, and body that is born again and preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, I want to go, if I can here for just a, a minute, to 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter and the 17th verse. We talked about this, uh, this new beginning, this, this new, new life. It's a, it's a different stage than what you were in before. Some people think you can accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and just say that's all there is to it and then live on in the life that you were. That's not the way God wants us to be. He wants us to lay down the things that we were doing that don't need to be, that, that sin that causes death. Uh, this is uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He's a new creature. Remember we talked about the, the first beginning where, where that um, God had made the heaven and the earth. Well, God made all of these creatures. He made man. We, we became a living soul uh, when he breathed into our, our nostrils the breath of life. But when we become following after the way of, of sin and, and uh, of the devil, then we die. We become dead. He, the, the, the soul, all souls are mine. 
The soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. If we, if we live according to the, the flesh, we're going to die. But we became, can become alive again. We can have a new creature. Once we were born, we have that first creation. Then we become a new creature in Jesus Christ. It's something different than what your, this world has to offer. It's something greater. Uh, I said it earlier. Some people are sitting in darkness and don't even realize it. They don't even realize where they're at. They don't realize how deep in sin they are. But let the light of the gospel free you from those sins. Don't live that way anymore. Uh, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. In Jesus Christ, it's that new beginning. It's that second beginning that we're looking for. I, I love talking about this because I want people to be excited about the Lord. In, a, in Ephesians, he said, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, what about that love of God? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you believe in the Son of God today, you can have life everlasting. I love that. I love it so much. Uh, Romans, the fifth chapter, sixth verse. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? That grace of God, even though it was given to us, we can't continue in sin and expect for God just to save us anyway. I want to go to, uh, I'll, I'll just read that next verse, the second verse. It says, God forbid. God says, no. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? We have to become dead to sin. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father even so we also should walk in newness of life. I want to jump over right quick. I don't have much time but I want to jump over here to the uh, 19th verse. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of, the, of your flesh. For ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity. Even so now yield ye your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when you were the servants of sin, listen now, when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had you then in those things whereof you were not, you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Hey, praise, praise God, the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your first fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. I love that, our, that life that we have, that excitement that we have. Here at the church, we want that to be in your life. We want you to lay down that sin, lay it aside, and come and walk with Jesus Christ. Come down to the church at 2211 South Dixie Highway. Let God into your life. Be baptized. Let that Holy Ghost come. He that cometh to God must believe that he is, that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Seek you the Lord while he may be found. Come to God. Let him in your life. May God bless you is my prayer.